The only thing serrated knives have in common is that serrations are one-sided and the other side is flat. Other than that, they are all different. Some producers put serrations on the left side of the knife, others put on the right side. Edge angle in the serrations can be anything from 18 to 40 degrees. However, the majority falls near 30 degrees. For example, this companion bread knife has edge angle in its serrations of 28 degrees. Spideco. They make their serrations at 28 degrees as well. Just as a matter of curiosity, I checked serrations in this fighting knife. And it is 26 degrees. So the majority is near 30, but <laughs> take this bread knife. And its serrations are 38 degrees. This was just to illustrate how different edge angle and serrations are, but this is not to be a concern when we sharpen them, because we do not sharpen in serrations, we sharpen the flat side. We grind the flat side and deburr inside the serrations. Serrated knife sharpening is 10% of grinding and 90% of deboring. Once again, we do not grind in the serrations. Grinding in the serrations is not sharpening. Grinding in the serrations is a restoration. I can restore Spideco, but no one would ever bother restoring a bread knife. We just sharpen and sharpen them till they are good to use, then throw in the bin. I will show how we sharpen serrated knives on the example of this campaign bread knife. Let's take the initial sharpness. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And the sharpness in the arch is 410. This knife is near dull. We grind the flat side of the serrated knife in front of the tomic. The frontal vertical base allows to place the knife flat on the wheel. I raise the support enough for the knife cheek to clear over the wheel. And then keep raising slowly till I get the serration arch contact the wheel. We do not need it any lower. Uh, could you show from it? from inside, from the outside. <laughs> now from the upside. Okay. That's good enough. Oh, if you could show from here. In this position, we do a couple of passes to raise the burr inside the arches of the serrations.
two three passes is usually enough our goal is to raise as minimal minimum burr as possible the earlier you detect the burr the better do not wait till you can see the burr use cotton buffs to check if the burr is there it will drag on the burr and i call this a hanman sign as long as soon as you see the hanman sign uh, the grinding is complete and we can move to the burrow I've been asked the question what wheel grit to use. Generally speaking, of knife grinding, the less the burr, the better, serrated or plain knives. But with serrations, it is especially important to displace as little ground metal into serrations as possible. Because you cannot flip the blade and thin the burr on the other side. So the finest grit that works for a particular knife is your best grit. The wheel grit near 1000, like the graded Tomek wheel, works for the most serrated knives. But if the knife is grossly dull, start grinding on a coarse wheel, but apex on grit 1000. Now we proceed to the burring inside the serrations. It is not possible to debug cleanly on the Tomek leather wheel. But if it is all you have, and you are desperate to have this knife done right now, you can debug on the corner of the Tomek leather wheel. But only occasionally, because if you do it often, the serrations will fray your leather wheel. If you do, forget the universal support, do it freehand, and do not slant the blade more than necessary. Try to keep it as close to the horizontal as possible. To deburr the serrations properly, you need some sort of a narrow wheel. We use an 8 inch tapered felt wheel. This particular wheel is flint hard and it is about the same diameter as the Tormac leather wheel. Both my wheels have Tomek honing paste on them. The honing angle is maintained with our frontal vertical base and set with the help of our computer software. Let's move to the computer. We will be deburring the scan pen serrated knife on the Tomek 7. That tapered felt wheel diameter I measured earlier it is 203.3 millimeters now we have to measure the jig projection jig length measuring the knife jig length measure it to the most proximal point in the arch not to the peaks in this case, it is 138 millimeters. The jig projection is 138 millimeters, and the honing angle as you remember, measured by laser protractor is 28 degrees. Calculate. This is the height of the universal support that we must set to and that will give us our target honing angle. I put 
round it to 88 millimeter. from the venue caliper. The universal support height is set to hone at 28 degrees. If you don't have a laser protractor and do not know the exact edge angle in your serrations, just set it to 30 degrees, as common serrations have edge angle near that, and adjust using a marker method. Do not rush to do all the serrations. First deburr a single serration, as most probably you will have to adjust the deburring angle to get the burr. I will mark one serration for you. Now deburr the single serration and check for the burr. Yeah, this angle is right. Now we can proceed to do all the serrations. But, suppose you still had the bird dragging on the cotton butt. In this case, turn the micro just by one full turn, one full turn up and try again and so on till the bird is gone. We deburr only inside the serrations and spare the peaks. Peaks must stay peaked in the serrated knives. They are supposed to rip the stuff. That's what the serrations are all about. Next time, as I said, sharpening serrated knives is 10% of grinding and 90% of deburring. Now flip the blade on the flat side and hone it on the atomic leather wheel freehand. Just one pass.
I cleaned the honing paste off with wipe spirits. We will continue as I clean it. I cannot see any burn, neither I can feel it. Let's test sharpness. Uh, I want to test on the sharpness tester straight away, but I realize that not everyone has got it. So let's do a couple of conventional sharpness tests, what people usually call magazine paper. Mm. Let's see if I've got anything here. Are they visible on your display? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does shave. Not as clean as a razor. Still leaves bold patches of glory. <laughs> and sharpness testing. And the sharpness inside the serration, the arch. One ten. One one zero. Are we done yet? If you read my book, you will know that at this stage we've removed the bulk of the burr, but not the root of the burr, and might have a wire edge there. This knife cuts the paper well, it even shaves, but the wire edge is weak and the knife may turn dull early. To clean the edge apex of the wire edge, we have to do additional honing at a higher angle. Let's try and see if the sharpness score that we've got improves. We remove the wire edge by more honing at a little higher angle. For mainstream knives, it is by one full turn of the micro adjust that raises the universal support by approximately one and a half degrees. Make sure that you don't exert any pressure. It's only the weight of the knife jig and the knife itself. A little of rocking motions to get all the way inside the serration. Leave the blade and do the flat side. Let me clean the knife and we will check if we've got an improved sharpness.
Gene Epics, the Epix cleaned of the wire edge is strong and we see the improved sharpness. The edge cleaned of the wire edge will stay sharp for long and our customers will definitely appreciate that. Anything else? Maybe more about felt wheels. Right, let me bring it. This is 8 inch split flaps, that's how the jewelers call them. I've got an unchanged new wheel here. The good thing about that hard felt is that you can change the wheel profile by simply sanding it with sandpaper to better match profile of the serrations. If you can make a close up to compare this new wheel out of the box with the wheel I use, what I did, I sanded this corner, rounded it. To match the profile of the serrations. These wheels out of the box come with a pinpoint hole that you drill to match your shaft. In case of Tomic we drill it with 12mm drill. <laughs>